June 1985, San Francisco, California, People vs. Cliff, St. Joseph. Overview. A body was discovered in San Francisco, California on June 15, 1985. John Doe had multiple stab wounds, genital injuries, and a pentagram had been carved into his chest. The court notes that there was substantial evidence that it was a sadistic, ritualistic human sacrifice consisting of whipping with a chain, slashing the victim's lips, dripping wax into the victim's eyes, burning and carving the victim's flesh with a knife, multiple stabbings, tying the limbs with a guitar wire, and genital mutilations. The identity of the victim was never established. The case was solved when police arrested four people for disturbing the peace, one of whom was a Ricky Hunter. Hunter claimed St. Joseph and the others had held him against his will and assaulted him. There was talk of a satanic worship and the other three people had been speaking of sacrificing him. One of the offenders stated that he had been present when St. Joseph had John Doe in his home and he helped St. Joseph dispose of the murdered victim described above. The court found that there was sufficient evidence proving that the injuries had been inflicted on the victim while he was still alive. The coroner testified that some of the wounds inflicted were consistent with sadomasochistic practices, but the court made a point of highlighting that the manner in which the victim was murdered, along with inferred intent, indicated that this was a ritual sacrifice. February 1990, Utah, State of Utah vs. Allen B. Hadfield. Convictions for sodomy and child molestation remanded back to the court for evidentiary hearing. Overview. A. Hadfield was convicted of sodomy and sexual abuse of his children after his children testified against him. He appealed based on claims of newly discovered evidence. This was an allegation by a paralegal who stated that the therapist involved in counseling his children and others in this Mormon community was the common factor in these cases and inferred that the therapist was responsible for the allegations. The appellate opinion cites that at least 15 adults and 15 children were identified as participants in various unusual sexual activities, including instances of group abuse of children by adults. The activities described by the children involve satanic ritual, costumes, masks, photography equipment, men dressing in women's clothing, and frequent episodes of playing with and consuming human excrement. A specific instance of abuse related to Dr. Snow by W and described by her at trial, for example, involved defendants removing feces from a child's rectum with a spoon and forcing him to play with it. The appellate court remanded the case back to court for, a, a, for an evidentiary hearing if the affidavit by the paralegal had merit. Note, according to the prosecutor, the judge reviewed the information and found there was no evidence to support the claims of the paralegal. Alan Hadfield's conviction still stands, but he was released from probation in 1998. November 1989, Gabon, Africa. Maba Natim was found guilty and sentenced to death for murder and leading cannibalism rights. Overview. Several members of this religious cult were found guilty of aiding in cannibalism ceremonies by serving human flesh to worshipers. A victim's mutilated remains were found in another town and a photo was published of the high priest with a knife in his teeth and a jar containing pieces of the victim's tongue in his hands. In the ceremony led by Natim, Members of the cult ate the victim's stomach, liver, heart, lungs, tongue, and genitals in what their leader called a sacred plate. Some of the worshippers were unaware of the contents Natim told the court. The court prohibited other details from being released. The news article states that 
animism is a loose religious belief popular in Central Africa and other parts of the world that a spirit or force resides in every animate and inanimate object. November 1988, Singapore. Three cult members hang for murder. Adrian Lim, 46, his wife, Tan Mu Chu, and his girlfriend Ho Ka Hong, 33 years old, were convicted in 83 for murdering Agnes Nig Su Hyok, 8 years old, and Ghazali Marzuki, 10 years old, in 81. The three perpetrators belong to a cult that believes sacrificing children could bring good luck. The three drank the children's blood after suffocating them in a bathtub. Another news report writes that the macabre ritualistic killings included drinking the children's blood, trances, and electric shock treatments. See three Singaporeans hang for cult murder of children, Reuters, November 25th, 1988 and three hanged in Singapore for ritual killings, UPI, November 25th, 88. December 1983, Detroit, Michigan, Arzell Jones was convicted of first-degree criminal sexual conduct, single counts of kidnapping and using a firearm during a felony. Linda Green was convicted of two counts of first-degree criminal sexual conduct, Arzell Jones, a private investigator, and Linda Green, a Detroit policewoman, were convicted of sexually assaulting a 31-year-old woman who was held for more than three days and forced to take part in satanic rituals. The prosecutor stated the woman was a victim of some cultism, some ultimate psychological warfare. See, judge says victim was subjected to reign of terror. Man and policewoman guilty of sexual assault and satanic rituals. Detroit Free Press, December 3rd, 1983. September 11th, 2003. Brazil. Cecio Brandeo. Sentenced for uh, murder and attempted murder. News articles report that five influential members of Brazilian society went on trial in 2003 for the torture, castration, and murder of five children ages 8 to 13 whose sexual organs had been removed and used in rites of black magic between 89 and 93. Amelton Madeira Gnomes, son of a businessman, Carlos Alberto Santos, policeman, and two doctors, Anicio Fiera de Souza and Cecio Brandao were charged with the crimes. The fifth defendant, 75 year old Valentina Andrade, a fortune teller and leader of a UFO group called the Superior Universal Alignment, was tried for these crimes but was not convicted. The five defendants allegedly used their influence in efforts to stop the case from going to trial, intimidated victims, and destroyed evidence. The prosecution asked for the trial to be moved to another locale, Para State. A total of 19 boys ages 8 to 14 were victimized. Five were mutilated and died. Three escaped with horrible injuries. Six escaped before they were harmed and five have never been seen again. Some victims had their eyes gouged out, wrists slit, and sexual organs cut off. The two doctors were accused of selling the internal organs of the children and using their genitals in satanic rituals. Two mutilated survivors, now adults, escaped from Brazil's Amazon region where they had been tied to trees after being doped and castrated. They both identified Carlos Alberto Santos as the man who kidnapped them when they were 9 and 10 years old. Brazil's Special Secretary for Human Rights said the trial had symbolic significance because of the influential professions of the defendants. The trial was seen as a test of Brazil's ability to bring justice to isolated areas where it was suspected the legal system might be under the sway of powerful locals. Carlos 
Albert Santos was sentenced to 35 years. Gnomes was sentenced to 57. And ECO de Souza was sentenced to 77 years. Cecio Brandao was sentenced to 56 years. C. Trial opens on ritualistic murders of Brazilian children. Agence France Press, August 29, 2003. Two sentence and mutilation murder case in Brazil, Associated Press, August 30th, 2003. Satanic sect leader denies charges she tortured murdered children in Brazil. Agence France Press, November 9th, 19th, 2003. May 26, The People vs. Richard John Vieira, Supreme Court of California. Death sentence affirmed on three counts. Remand to trial court and reversal of death sentence for one count. Appellate documents state that a jury convicted Richard John Vieira of Stanislaus County for four counts of murder and conspiracy which took place in 1990. Vieira and his co-defendants David Beck and Gerald Cruz all lived in the camp where Gerald Cruz served as the leader. Cruz instigated the murders of four individuals from a rival group. Defendant's sister testified that she lived with Cruz in 1987 to 1988, at which time Cruz led others in the study of the occult and the performance of supposedly occult rituals that included candles, robes, and chanting. <clears throat> that included candles, robes, and chanting. Cruz told Young, that to sacrifice your firstborn was the greatest thing you could ever do and that it was for the satisfaction of Satan. The defense solicited testimony regarding the defendant's cult membership and his in incapacity to form the requisite criminal intent. Testimony evidenced that Vera was a slave to other members of the group. Family members testified the defendant often appeared to have been beat up with black eyes, fat lips, and slashes on his arms. According to the defendant's diary, he had been electroshocked and beat up by members of the group. A cult expert testified that Cruz directed a cult which had occult and satanic underpinnings. They engaged in various rituals, and the defendant was under mind control at the time of the crime. Cruz directed the members of the group to read and study the books of Aleister Crowley, of whom Cruz believes himself to be the reincarnation. There were also reports that the defendants were part of a Nazi or white supremacist organization. The court ultimately rejected the defense argument that the crimes were committed under duress. The dissenting judge wrote that he would have reversed the death penalty and acknowledged that at the time of the murders, the defendant was a submissive member of a satanic cult led by Gerald Cruz. In this case, the evidence shows that the defendant acted under the substantial domination of the cult leader Gerald Cruz, who controlled every aspect of the defendant's life and threatened to kill anyone who did not follow his orders. Absent the perniculous influence of a satanic cult leader, it is doubtful the defendant would have committed murder. The dissent thought that the defendant was under mind control at the time of the crime and noted that the expert explained how cults use isolation, sleep deprivation, punishment, and occult ritual to dominate and control the minds of their members.